Sailing Through Mermaids. This story that I will tell, my father has told to me. That at the same time, his father has told him. My grandfather had sailed for almost 40 years. He knew every port and every corner of the ocean. And so he had many stories to tell. Unfortunately I was too young when he was alive, and had he ever told me a story, I wouldn't pay him any mind. When one is a child, they don't tend to listen to their grandparents. With how important these stories are, and the experiences they had. We should pay more attention to their stories to not regret it later as adults when they're gone. Like it has happened to me. An incredible story and a repeated one. Is the following. I wish to share it with you now that it has a lot to do with the research on this channel. Nos confundan. And it could be of help to keep discovering our home, wrongly called, Globe Earth. In the year 1923, my grandfather, of who I won't say their real name, but I'll call, Rob, was sailing amongst eight other people. Through the famous, Drake, passage. The waves slammed against the boat. They were enormous waves. They would reach great height. The crew was well used to storms of that sort and complicated sailing. Although, truly on that night. They all were fearful of losing their life. They lost all sense of direction. They were just dedicated to resist and survive how they could. The ocean had taken them more towards the south where those waves no longer existed. But the cold invaded them so quickly, and they weren't prepared. They were wet and with the unbelievable cold, they had lost two men. Losing members of the crew is the worst thing that could happen to you. You feel a great emptiness. Before becoming part of the crew they're your friends. Whom you'll remember forever. But I shall recognize that in that moment in between the degrees below zero. Our bodies shaking. And the boat completely lost. We would be the next ones. There wasn't even time to feel sorry. The sea always guides you, my dear Rob would always say. And this case wasn't the exception. The sea had taken them to the deep Antarctic waters where they found a great wall of ice. Strange as it may seem it was a frozen edge that appeared out of nowhere. So they tried to navigate it in parallel, but fate had another plan for them. From within this strange frozen wall a great blue-purple light peeked out from the fearsome icebergs. What the hell was all that? They began to wonder. This light seemed to emerge from nothing itself. But it attracted their boat of which seemed to not stop. The light began to enlarge in such a way that it was already surrounding the entire boat. They were now part of this great light that entered through each crack. My father tells that in this part of the story where the light surrounds them, my grandfather used to become excited and emotional to the point of tears. He says that the feeling was indescribable about being inside of there. This light seemed to have eaten the entire boat with everyone inside. Later on, a great white light completely blinded them. When they finally opened their eyes, they were now sailing through a completely different zone and calmly, with the sun in sight. Also, there was the great difference that they had the great ice wall behind them and no longer in front. But there was an even greater difference beyond these details. The sun had a weird red tone to it. The sky was in a dark blue tone. And in fact, the great ice walls were no longer frozen, but instead they were walls of the weirdest ones you can imagine. Their tops seemed to be sliced in a perfect cut. And you could see some ice on the very tops. For a great sailor, sailing through secret zones, or areas unknown, is to reach glory itself. And more so, when the cold is slowly killing you and your bones can no longer move, entering a normal zone, feels like entering the hottest place after being locked up for hours. Although we felt the peace of surviving, many times we thought we were really dead. If it weren't for the bodies of the two crew members, our friends we had lost. And whom we dumped in the sea. In this strange and calm sea on the other side of the walls. Now what? We all said at once. What shall we do now? Where shall we go? There was no visible nearby land and the mountains were impossible to penetrate. 
They were at least 230 or 300 meters high, if not more. We tried to guide ourselves by perception. And we followed the mysterious red sun, since we had no way of guiding ourselves on our own. To be clear, our erratic compasses were not gonna help us. After sailing for hours upon hours, and beginning to fear again for our lives. We found land in sight. Our joy was so great that we had even forgot that maybe these lands were untouched by humans. Land in sight, great vegetation with beautiful shades of green and no animals in sight. Absolutely no prowling birds around, it was not a good sign. Although the lively colored flowers cheered our damaged spirit from this trip. We had no choice but to get off the boat and explore this apparent new land. Now the big question was, were we really discovering new land? But we had to find food and water which was the urgent task at the time. We were temporarily happy to have filled our weak stomachs with delicious local fruits and water we found from a stream that seemed to descend from a great cliff. We looked around in a different point of view. What would we do now? There was nowhere else to go, but how can we stay on this land? And most importantly, for how long? We imagined that we should try to go back the way we came. And find the great purple light again. It was not an easy task, now that we had to see the possibility of crossing or finding that light in the great mountains. We had spent a few nights there anyway, since we had to repair our boat from everything that it went through in this, without a doubt, strangest trip that any sailor has ever been able to have. Or so we thought. Hours later, the fatigue that had generated so much stress and being able to find a warm zone after so long. Made it possible for us to sleep almost instantly. The curious sun was still in the same place. It had not moved an inch. And it didn't look like it would any time soon. After some time, who knows how many hours. A crew member woke us up yelling and pointing towards the right. When we were able to see, we found that from the same sea and around our boat there were very strange creatures. There was eight figures of women emitting a strange deafening song. We looked at each other to understand that all this wasn't a dream, or better yet a nightmare. These women had scales on most of their body as if they were fish. And they moved as such. Their eyes were red and had a demonic appearance. We began to retreat from the fear that this caused us. Their screams even began to increase more and more. It was unbearable. They were songs of very high-pitched voices that in addition to generating a lot of fear, could not be endured. We ran opposite from the sea. Trying to find shelter in the wilderness. We waited a long time so as not to have to come across those half-fish half-woman demons again. And so we returned to the boat. Everything was calm, or so it seemed. We got on the boat as fast as we could. And we left for what we remembered to be our way back. Obviously with fear that these creatures could come back. From afar we could see the great walls. And we got as close as we could. The water crashed against them and our boat almost did too. We sailed for hours and hours along these mountain walls. And suddenly the purple light began to show up. This time it didn't envelop us, but we tried to shove our boat into it. And we entered a kind of trip where our surroundings were all white. I couldn't even see my crew, the great white light blinded my eyes. When we recovered we realized that we were now sailing on the other side of the walls, this time frozen again. But we could not find any reference as to whether we were on Antarctic zones. Sailing for almost a whole day, we had arrived at the port of a city called Vladivostok. How did we end up there? We did not find any logical reasoning, nor how we got to that unknown land where some type of mermaids endangered our lives. In what world do we truly live in? And how much do we really know about it?